What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I am Josh and this is Ohio Off-Road. So we're gonna be working on this today. Um, we'll see how far we get. Um, I do wanna make the control arms more permanent. So that means getting rid of that PVC. Um, that'll probably be all I'll do for today, but that won't be all the video. And then tomorrow I'll come back, cut that steering box off, or the steering box mount off and start working on the drag link or not sorry not the drag link track bar pan hard bar whatever you want to call it but first we got to do the control arms as it sits right now we're 114 right around there 113 114 so i'm gonna end up pushing the front end up three inches and try to get 116 117 Somewhere around there, and then I'll help out that approach angle a lot too. So that's our goals for right now. Gotta get those control lines measured up. I got some some tube down there. So we gotta get that stuff cut up, measured, and ready to at least tack them in. I'll probably tack them and then we'll do a permanent weld later on. So let's get to work. All right, first thing I'm gonna do is get these slowers done for all of them, because I have the tube already sitting over there and it's ready to cut. So I'm just gonna come through, measure these, this lower right here, and then I'm just gonna cut two. So we are roughly 33 and a quarter inches. Double measure, just in case, but I think we're good. Yep, 33 and a quarter. Let's get the saw out. Alright, probably need to check to make sure this is square. Because it's probably been a while. Yep, square. So measure the needed length. Alright, there it is. Tighten this guy down. Let's get to cutting. Hopefully it doesn't blow a breaker. Usually it does. All right, so I just got those rear lowers cut. Now I'm just measuring for the uppers. I mean, sorry, for the front lowers. So I'm gonna take that, whatever these measure out at, those PVC pieces, I'm actually gonna add two and a half inches so we get two inches stretch on them. Or sorry, it'll be three inch stretch because the hind joints are completely bottomed out. So I'm gonna measure that. Add two and a half inches onto it, and we'll have the lowers and we'll get those cut. All right, let's see what they go to. 31 and a quarter is what they measure out to, so I'm going to need to do 33 and three quarters. I think that's how the math works. 31 and a quarter. I want to add two and a half, so it goes to three quarters. So, yeah, 33 and three quarters. So, let's get over there and cut them 33 and three quarters. All right, just got those front lowers done. Now I'm just gonna take measurement for the upper front and get that one cut. That guy right there, wherever it is. So I just gotta take measurement off of that and get it cut. And we should be good with all the two inch DOM. And then I can get the inch and a half and cut those guys. But it's a beautiful Ohio winter day. Just snow, so nothing else to do but to uh, work in the garage. So that's what I'm doing. I guess it's either I work in the garage or I work in the house and make a video. But eh, I feel like working in the garage. I was on a computer all day because it's Friday and I had to work. So definitely better to get out of the garage, get out into the garage on those days when you already sat on the computer all day. So let's get the upper over there measured and cut out 
and then do the roots. Oh, I forgot to take the duct tape off. This is when it's kind of nice to have an extra person, but Ashley's not here for me. So we're going to go 30, 33 and three quarters. Then I'm going to add that two and a half, so 36 and a quarter. So we're going to cut it 36 and a quarter. So let's cut it. All right, so now I got all the two inch tube cut for the lowers and the third linker in the upper. So I have to get one and a half inch tube off of my little rack back there. And that's gonna be kind of hard by myself, but it's better than waking up the wife and her getting mad at me. So we're gonna go grab that. So let's do it. I just measured that upper link, 33 and a quarter is what we're going with. Got it on the saw, just get it cut out. Let's go. All right, I got all the DOM cut for the control arms. So now I'm just gonna do is go ahead and just like put a bevel to them, clean them out a little bit so those inserts slide in and out of them. I'm gonna do these ones first. I'm gonna do the whole rear axle first, and then we're going to the front. So I'm just gonna grind these down and stick some of those things in there and hit them with the welder. All right, so I just got done cleaning these up. Put a nice little bevel to them. So they are ready to at least get tacked in. So I'm not gonna show you guys the rest of all we're gonna do these. I'm not gonna show you the rest of the one, two, three, four, five other arms. So I won't show you that because that will just get boring. I'll just show you guys the finished product, but they all got a bevel to them. And now we just have to tack them on for now. And then later we're gonna do a full finish weld on them. So that's our goal right now. All right, so I got the tube inserts set in there. You can see the nice little bevel we put on them. So they're on both sides. This side slid in there. This side I had to pound in. And then for us, I always take these out. Um, I learned a hard way not to leave them in there because the first time I ever did this, the Heim seized in these tube inserts. So always kind of take these out whenever you're welding on them. So they're out. Now Ashley's just gonna go ahead and burn them on for a couple tacks. Tacked up. Four. Yep, good. I like them. You got two nice big tacks and then two small tacks. All right, good. All right, we got both sides tacked. Some pretty big tacks on them, so we're gonna let it cool down a little bit, and I'll put those hinds in there, and then we'll have that one done. I'm gonna go grab that one and do that. All right, guys. So we just made some pretty big progress. We got all the control arms built, and. Those ones are in in the back. The lowers are in on the front. Um, I'm running into a problem with the upper, so I'll show you guys what I'm dealing with and what I'm thinking. So I'll flip you around. Yeah, so you can see right there, the lower's in and it's all good and dandy. I bring the upper up to its spot and it's hitting, don't worry about the exhaust. That's really not a problem. It is hitting that motor mount on this side. So let's see if I can get a video of it. Yeah, you see it's hitting right there. So, so what I think I need to do, I gotta go ahead and cut that box off now. And then I can rotate the axle backwards. And then once I rotate the axle backwards, I might be able to clear. So we'll see. All right, well, just got that link done. What I ended up doing, because I'm kind of lazy right now, it's getting pretty late, is I just picked the frame up. I picked the frame up an inch. 
So now it's sitting a little higher. I think tomorrow I'm gonna to cut that box off and then we're gonna look at doing pan hard bar. All right, well, it's the next day. I am determined to make this a roller today. We will see if that happens. But I was talking to Jeff yesterday, well, last night, and me and him were talking. My belly height at bump is way too tall. So with that, I think my belly height right now is 20 inches at bump and i would like it to be 20 inches or 22 inches at ride height so that'd be with six inches of up travel um so with that i have to make some modifications so you have to first take this pump off they make whole relocation brackets and stuff for these ls's so i'm gonna have to move this pump up here and then that engine mount i'll show you the engine mount so right there, you can see the engine mount and how close the, the control arm is to bottoming out the engine mount. So we have to fix that too. That was pretty easy. I don't know what bolts I'm going to need to really use with those brackets because I'm going to bring that pump. The pump's going to come way up here now. So now we got this whole opening right here where I can go through, probably bust the plaza out. And then the other problem is gonna be these headers. And what I've seen other people do is they take those headers, flip them upside down, and then run that exhaust over the top of the engine. just cut the engine mount so now the control arm can slide up in there um, I flipped the header around so we don't have any interference with the headers um, but now I'm just gonna go ahead and cut this box off too since I got the plasma running and everything so we're gonna cut that off and Chow, chow, chow. <laughs> <laughs> it's off. Yeah, that's off. All right, Josh, moment of truth. Are you going to get your bump height that you want? I don't know. I hope so. Right there. No interference yet. Let's check the back. <clears throat> drive line has enough, or not drive line, but upper control arm has enough, but not the mm -hmm. axle, I don't think. Yeah, that's it right there. I don't think we can go that low. Probably as low as we need it though. Right there? I bet you it is. That's probably bone. Is it touching? Well, I can grind that down. So you're all for taking stuff yeah. away. I think I might take a little bit of that truss off so it comes up and gets more in the bump. But that's definitely a lot lower. But is it now too low? There's no such thing. There is such a thing as too low. No, there's not actually. Yes, there is. Go through and drop that rear down too. Do the cut so we can drop that rear down. I'll show you what we gotta cut. So it's a real easy cut. We just gotta take this piece off right there. And then it'll be able to sit down a little bit more. And then we'll see if we gotta take off anything else. Man, whoever did those welds right there. Those look good. All right, Josh, moment of truth. Did it work? Well, it dropped it down a bit, but we are, we only got about two inches, so. All right, so I've been making some pretty good progress. I got this thing sitting down pretty low. You see, I had to go with the truss and kind of grind that down just a little bit so it sits. Our belly height is now 19 and a half, 19 three quarters, right around that way. And that's at full bump. I don't think I can get much lower than that just because of the, how this frame is. But, but right now we are moving over to the pan hard bar, track bar, whatever you want to call it. 
So I'll show you guys that. All right, right now I just have it built. This is a, I don't know, one of those places that you get the brackets from. I, I honestly don't remember. Um, they're all the kind of same thing. But we got them built. We got a heim in there. So it gives us the spacing. And now we just have to go through, lay a couple tacks on it. We'll get this plate right there on the other side after we get this side tacked up. And then we're gonna do a full bench weld on it. And then we're gonna stick it on here. So when I go to do this, I wanna have that thing kinda of as far that way as I can get it. And then I'm gonna have to build one off of the frame because the one I have, it's not gonna give us enough distance. So as she's getting ready to attack and we're gonna go from there. I have to show everybody my new mask. <laughs> You're supposed to go, Luke, I am your father. <laughs> Luke, I am your father. <laughs> Let's go. All right, it's all decked up. Put the other plate on there. And then... Back that. All right, so I actually welded the full weld on the axle bracket for the track bar, pan hard bar. So those welds look really nice because Ashley's a pretty good welder. Um, this is the other half, the frame side portion I bought. And I think we're gonna have to modify it. I'll go over there and show you guys what I'm thinking. How this one goes, it just kind of sits down in there, just like that. And like, that's okay. I mean, it's really whatever, but I would like it to be kicked out like that that way we kind of get it mounted the same on the axle because for pan hard bars so you have the right geometry of that you want the middle of the bar to be with the middle of the frame and if i just keep it how it is it's going to be a lot longer on that side or we have to make the bar way too short and then I'm thinking if I just go ahead and grab a point right here and just run a 90 off of those points, I can rotate it, kick it back, and we can still weld onto this bracket and then weld it onto the frame. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna get it marked up and hopefully it works. All right, so we just got this piece marked out. So we measured equal distances from here to there and down to there. The same thing outside to inside top down, found our point, came in, called a 90 off this point at 45 degrees of the original. So we'll kick it out 45 degrees the way we wanted it to. And it should work out. So all I gotta do now is just cut Ashley's tack welds off and then get the plasma and just blow those out. So that's what I gotta do. So we just got these cut out. Um, they're looking pretty good. They key in there like pretty well on both sides. And then if we come over here and we set it all on the frame. There and then there, you see it kicks it away from the frame maybe a, an inch and a half two inches and then it lines kind of up with that tube so we're gonna tack these on kind of how it is and get the other one tacked on and run some tubes see if it works i think it's gonna work perfect we just try to test fit this on the axle so this is the axle side and 
it's not going to work. So you can see, there's no room for it. So what I ended up doing was measuring from here to there, and it's four inches. So I measured the width. Here to there is four inches. Here to there is four inches. Drew lines, connected the lines. So we're going to cut this down. So it should fit right in between there. So yeah. my poor beautiful welds. All that shoes, beautiful welds are all going to get chopped up. All right, so we just went through, I think, four iterations of the frame mount, a track bar mount. And I think we finally got it done. Um, so you can see it's really, really tight clearance. You can see it's tight clearance to the tie rod and everything that has tight clearance to the diff cover. Really tight. Um, and then we put the axle side on it. But I think everything clears. So we're pretty happy. We ended up putting a one inch offset heim on the axle side just to let us kick it up a little bit more and give us some more room away from that diff so we don't have to bend the tube. Gonna be exactly how we run it. So I'm just gonna grab some tube now, cut it at 31 inches, and then we're gonna weld the bungs in and the track bar is hopefully done. And then we'll flex it out and make sure nothing pops off or there's no binding. <laughs> Ready to go. Josh got the tube all beveled. Ready for me to weld the inserts in. He just has to retrieve the bungs. That way I can weld them on. Alright, so we got the bar made. So let's hope it works. Fingers crossed, everybody. This has been like a 20 some hour process. <laughs> okay, we got it in there now. Yeah. Okay, good. Haha! <laughs> Woo wee! It's in! It's in. Now, we do have to shorten it. Because the axle has to move that yeah. way. Yeah, and before we do that, you want to put a bigger tack on that axle side before we start shortening it and pull that off. I asked you earlier if you wanted more tacks. Uh, more tack. And you said, nope, that's good. I didn't want any right there because we didn't know. Well, so now we have to definitely give it a better shot. I could just weld those two tacks together. Yeah. Stitch it. Yep, weld it. Okay, <laughs> do the welder. Yes, I look ridiculous. Don't it? Oh, all right, guys. So it is the next day. Actually, it's a few days later. I just was editing this video and realized I forgot to do a flex test. So that's what we're going to do real quick. And then we'll get this video up. So let's do it. All right, so I got everything set up. Track bar is ready. I'm not too sure if I'm really excited about how it is, but it's working right now, so we can make it a roller. I'm just going to get a jack, drop this side down, make sure everything clears, and then do the same with that. All right, we got this side dropped out. There's Lily. But we got this side dropped out. Clears there. No issues there. There's no binding on anything. It clears the diff cover just by a little bit, but I could push that axle back if I really wanted to. And everything clears over here. So, so I'm gonna put this one back on jack stands, drop the other side out, make sure we don't have any issues with that side. All right, guys, we dropped this side out. Everything is looking okay. We do have one issue. So right there, the track bar is hitting the frame. 
So what I'm gonna have to do is not just frame out, which that's not a really big problem. So I'm gonna do that. So I'm not gonna do it this video, maybe next video, but this is technically almost a roll. All right guys, I'm gonna end the video here. So our three link is working okay. We do have to do a couple things. I don't know how in love I am with the frame side track bar mount. Um, I might change that. What I'm thinking I might do is, let me just show you. So what I'm thinking of doing is to get it mounted up a little bit higher, at least a couple of inches, is come here, angle this, flat this, angle it back down so we can completely notch that frame up and get it up another couple of inches. And like I showed you, we're gonna have to do something like that on this side too. So that's gonna be for the next video. And I'm also going to do the transmission mount. So transmission mount, maybe track bar, maybe not, but definitely transmission mount. And then hopefully here soon, we can get to that tub that's back there. All right, guys, hope you guys liked the video. Don't, don't forget to like, subscribe, share, leave a comment, all the other fun YouTube stuff. Hope to see you guys on the trail one day. And adios.